Amen. Amen. Good evening. Hallelujah. Are we on? Amen. Glory to God. We do thank you for joining us tonight. Let's establish God's dominion and presence as we sing out this song, Lift Him Higher.
going to sing out this song, No Other Name But Jesus. No other name. establish an altar right where you're at as we sing out this song here i am to worship lift your hands and meditate upon the lord tonight let's sing it out together light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see Here I am to say that 
Let's love him, church. Mighty God and mighty Savior, and my Redeemer lives, and I shall bow uh, to bless your name and to exalt you and um, to worship at your footstool, my God. Um, heaven and earth shall pass away. Uh, thy word shall never pass away. Mila na 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 ma 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 ndo ma robo shende be ramando randa makaya. We love and praise and glorify the name of Jesus Christ is above all names, including every kind of sickness, every kind of oppression, and every obstacle that we could face. Uh, let us believe God tonight. How many of you have a burden upon your heart, your life? We want to believe God. We especially want to lift up Sister Flavia for a uh, physical need in her body. And we do want to pray. Uh, Brother Ryan's been going through some physical things. We're asking God to help him. Sister Mary Griffin, uh, for God's strength in her body. All of those that have uh, uh, are at home tonight, live streaming, we want to trust the Lord to help you and touch you, visit you in this service. We want to pray for the leaders of our country, all that are involved in the leadership decisions that affect our nation, the school systems, all kinds of things. As we come out of this uh, curse of the COVID, we do want to pray uh, for our uh, military, often far places, that God's grace be upon them. Our spiritual leaders, Pastor Greg, Sister Lisa, all of the board of elders and leaders of our fellowship, that God would give them wisdom in all the issues that they face. We want to pray for our missionaries, especially lifting up the tealings as they're uh, beginning there in Maricopa. Uh, the Vargas is uh, be leaving on Saturday to go to, um, uh, to Brazil. And also the Orpezas as they're getting their shots, so this COVID shot. Uh, so that they'll be able to go into uh, Cambodia. And so we want to believe God for all of these. Let's pray, and then we subside. I'm going to ask Brother Bill Griffin if he'll open our service. Father, we come in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, a desperate people, a desperate generation. 
Yea, a desperate church, God, we need your help. God, your wisdom, your grace, and the power of the Holy Ghost touch our, our people um, that are in need physically, God, mentally, um, relationally, God, financially. I'm asking you to intervene. Um, we bind the devil, the thief of the Word of God. I pray your anointing tonight upon the Word preached. Father God, we thank you for your incredible grace, your incredible mercy, Lord God. Pray you would move by the Holy Ghost, anointing our pastor, Lord my God, by your word, Lord God. But by the Holy Ghost, I pray, Lord God, that you would give safe traveling mercy to those going to the Brazil, Lord God. Touch every need, Lord God. We lose healing that by your stripes, your people might be made whole, whether here, Lord God, or online. And we look unto you, Lord God, and giving you all praise and thanksgiving what we believe you're going to do in Jesus Christ's name. We thank you. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you as you find your seat. We do want to welcome you this evening and appreciate uh, your fellowship tonight and uh, your presence here. I believe that God has good things in store for each and every one of us. We want to uh, just invite you again this Sunday. Uh, we're, we're continuing on in a brand new Sunday school. I want to give a, a little extra plug. It's on miracle ministry. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a number of different uh, facets and, and insights on the miracles and uh, and the miracles for today. Miracles that you know that Jesus. What was some of the what were some of the um, the uh, outworkings or the uh, the takeaways from the miracles of Jesus? And they're more than just simply an event that took place. But there's a lot of uh, things to unpack in uh, in the, the study of the miracles and uh, who got miracles and why did they get miracles and can we get a miracle and is it just a physical thing is there is there is there miracles for uh for deliverance for example can can somebody that's addicted have a miracle can somebody that is uh that has a relational issue can they have a miracle can uh financially can we expect god so all of these are 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 uh, areas addressed in the miracle ministry and i i also want to say that uh, I felt God deal with me concerning our conference, that that's going to be the theme, Miracle Ministry Contending for the Supernatural. So uh, I want you to be helping me to pray, and uh, we need breakthrough. We need absolutely God's uh, confirmations. Those are the best credentials are uh, signs and wonders. You, there's no... There's nothing like people that get set free and, and powerfully set free uh, by the miracle uh, love of God, the miracle grace of God. And so I'm believing, uh, as we many people feel, that uh, COVID was a, a kind of a dress rehearsal for things that leading up to the uh, mark of the beast. And I've heard a lot of stuff about that. And uh, and I've heard all kinds of stuff, but I, I do believe we're in the last of the last days, and uh, we've got to have an outpouring of God's miracle power, and so let's uh, let's believe God. Uh, Sunday worship at 10.30, Sunday evening at 6.30, and uh, let's see, who are we sending out Sunday evening? You going any, are you going any place? And so... Uh, anyway, we're uh, having our regular service. We want to believe God for uh, the outreaches um, that go out of this place, 630 local outreach, um, and uh, see the back bulletin board for some more details. Uh, please go ahead and turn them. Then uh, March 15th, there's a men's discipleship. Uh, Pastor Joe Campbell will be uh, ministering there in Prescott, our mother church. Van will leave at uh, 5.30 for that. A ladies' brunch, March 16th, um, the Chandler Pioneer Rally, uh, March 18th through the 20th. I have the privilege to minister along with some other leaders. And then March 26th, uh, home Bible studies. Ushers kindly come, and we want to invest uh, in God's um, uh, kingdom. There's some other, uh, don't forget the, the coming uh, revival. Uh, with uh, evangelist uh, Chris Hart. I was uh, tempted to build this as the laughing revival, but, uh, um, but he has a very serious ministry as well, gift ministry, and uh, we love his uh, uh, ministry. So don't, uh, don't miss that, but also be praying for that 
as that's coming uh, towards us. The conference in Tempe, May 3rd through the 7th, uh, be uh, marking that down on your calendar. Uh, some of you perhaps are going to get time off from work, and, and um, uh, that'll give you um, uh, hopefully time to put that in. So we want to uh, invest in God's kingdom, and as we are faced with the launching of these workers, of course, uh, that means that we have to provide airfare and support and then the startups and all that, that goes along with that. I want to deeply, deeply appreciate everybody that is faithful in their giving and their uh, not only just uh, the tithes, but also in pledges. I haven't taken a pledge for quite some time or challenged the church to a pledge for quite some time. And many of you, just as a matter of just as a matter of habit, because you have a heart for that, uh, without even any uh, pressure, any kind of uh, pledge that's going on, you are faithful to put resources into outreach. Thank you for that. Appreciate that very, very much. Uh, I'm asking God to bless this church. There's people here. You have businesses various um, various uh, opportunities at work. May God richly bless your ministry. I want to ask uh, Brother Joseph, would you ask the blessing on the gift and giver? Amen. God bless your giving. I've been delivered, praise the Lord. I've been delivered his blood I was bound by the chains of Satan I've been delivered praise the Lord I've been delivered praise the Lord I've been delivered by his blood I was bound by the chains of Satan I've been delivered praise the Lord I've been delivered One more announcement. Dave Ramsey's, uh, is this still, Brother Kevin, as a 16th? Uh, don't forget those that are involved in that. It's a, um, uh, that class is ongoing. That is the 16th. Uh, Pastor uh, Kay is going to come and minister. Praise God. Amen. Thanks. Praise God. Acts chapter 7, your Bibles. We were reading this the other day, those that are following the reading record, and so uh, this scripture just grabbed me in this particular occasion. You know, I love it every time when I read through the Bible, and I've read through the Bible over and over again, but when I read through the Bible, God points things out to me. Look at that. Have you seen that? Have you noticed that? And uh, uh, gives me inspiration. And so I thank God for that. Acts chapter 7. I was reading recently in a Reader's Digest. There was a high school teacher. Uh, a woman who was a school teacher. She was sharing with her class. That. And it was on Valentine's Day. And she shared with her class. An experience that she had when she was 10 years old. And and. She said the students put down their cell phones, which is kind of unusual, I guess, in, the, in that class in those days. And they paid attention because she said this was about love and it was about utter humiliation. And so everyone put down their phone, they're listening. And so she said, when I was 10 years old, I had a crush on a boy named David in our school, in our class. And David was so cute and everything. And so uh, the day came when they had a... Uh, a Valentine's Day celebration at her school when she was 10. And they all had to make out of construction paper little uh, mailbox to get their Valentines from other classmates. And so she made her, uh, her little mailbox and then at the end of, uh, uh, after they had all handed them out and she's looking in her mailbox and there's all these little cards and little, uh, uh, little cards from the students in the class but there was one big card. And so she pulls out that big card and she opens it up. And, uh, and this big card said, to the queen of Valentine's Day. 
And she's like, wow, and then, and then who could have sent this to me? And she opened it up, and there she sees the first thing she sees. It was signed by David, oh, the one that she had a crush on. Oh, what, a, what an amazing thing. Her heart is pounding. And then she reads the, the handwritten message that he put inside the card. It said, to the ugliest girl in the class. And she said she broke down into tears and, uh, and was uh, a bit traumatized by that for a period of time. But she shared that with her class in high school and everybody's feeling all sorry for her and everything. But she said, you know, uh, didn't devastate the rest of my life. And uh, today, here's what I want us all to do. We're all going to get out construction paper. And I know you're all seniors in high school and you're all embarrassed about it. You, you're going to make a mailbox, everybody. And, and I have all these little, little hearts that I cut out of uh, construction paper. And you're going to give one to everybody in the class. And I want you to write down on this paper, I want you to write something positive and something complimentary. And I want you to think about this person that you're addressing. And well, I notice them, they always seem to have a happy countenance. I, I notice they're always well-dressed or some kind of thing that you can say, it has to be complimentary. And, and so, you know, some of the boys in the back are like rolling their eyes, but, but everybody participated. And then she began to do this year after year. And she said through the years, uh, uh, she's gotten comments back. Some have saved some of the cards that they got. And they said that that, that was like, like an evangelist gave them a word. Uh, uh, it gave them strength. It gave them an encouragement that they needed at a certain time. And so uh, what a blessing that that turned out to be. You know, life in reality, real life, is made up of both positive and negative experiences. But depending upon how we process them, even the bad ones can be turned around for good. Just like in this teacher's life. I want to minister tonight on the good and the bad uh, from Acts chapter 7, verse 9. And the patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. Amen. We know the story, most of us, about Joseph and how he was sold by his brothers into slavery. They were thinking of killing him, but then they said, ah, you know, we... It would just sell him into slavery. And so they, they, uh, uh, he goes into slavery in Egypt. This was a years-long trial in Joseph's life, uh, not only to be betrayed by his brothers, uh, uh, sold into slavery, and then, uh, and then falsely accused uh, by his, uh, his master's wife, of, uh, of coming on to her, and so he gets thrown in prison, and then one thing after another in this guy's life, but we know the end of the story, things turn around, God blesses him, he becomes second in charge over Egypt, and, and he realizes and comes to an understanding, God sent me here uh, to preserve life, because as second in charge over Egypt, he is able to provide uh, uh, food and sustenance for his family members from, uh, from the old land. And so he, he delighted in that. So that terrible set of events in his life turned around for good. I want to minister first of all tonight, think about first uh, heritages, heritages from our forefathers. Getting an inheritance is good. I can say that because I've done it on more than one occasion, been just incredibly blessed. Things that are passed down from our parents can be, can be a great blessing. But you know, some of their bad traits can all, often find their way down to us as well. How many know what I'm talking about? Is there anybody in here that you say, 
you know, I saw what my old man was like, my dad, and I never want to be like that. But then you started to become like that. And the old saying goes that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and there are, there are things that are passed on that some of them are not things that we want to get for a heritage. You know, family traditions can be good or bad. This teacher shared an experience of, uh, of the things that she had gone through with her class and it became a yearly tradition for her and, uh, and became a blessing to many people. So that was a good uh, uh, thing that got passed down from year to year and done over and over again. In the text that we read tonight, we read the word, the patriarchs. The patriarchs are the forefathers. They are the fathers of each tribe of the nation of Israel. And they're also the brothers of Joseph that sold him into slavery. You know, we have things that are passed down from our forefathers. And some of those are not good. It goes all the way back to Adam. And how many know that Adam has passed down some things to us that are not good? Because we were all born with the stain of sin. We were born that way because it started with the first human beings and they passed it down to us and we opened the package and it's ours. The patriarchs, the Bible says in the text that we read, became envious. And you know, have you noticed that envy is still around today? So many years later. Isn't it interesting? You know, the Bible, people say, oh, the Bible was written a long time ago. It was written a long time ago and it's still very applicable today in our lives. And so uh, the envy, they became envious. I'm going to talk about envy more in a moment. But there's another heritage that has been passed down to us. Not only all the wicked and evil things but also the heritage that came from the second Adam that got passed down to us, that inheritance of Jesus Christ that he has imparted to us. So many things are involved with this. Main one is, of course, eternal salvation that came down to us from so long ago, and uh, he has given to us life. John 1.17, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came to us through Jesus Christ. And he has given to us something that has been passed down to us, a, a wonderful blessing, many-fold blessing that we have from him. And he is also not only providing us salvation and all that goes with us salvation, but he is the great example. And he has sent down to us an example of how to live. to love, to serve. He said, you know, when, when he gave us an example of what leadership is, he showed us what true leadership is. Here's God the Son, and he's not there to just boss people around. He came as a servant to serve the needs of others. And he said, you know, I've washed your feet and if I've done that for you, then you ought to continue with this that I'm handing down to you. And he showed us uh, the example. He showed us how to forgive from the cross. He's hanging their father. Forgive them. They know not what they do. And, and so he's showing us through his example. This has been passed down to us. And we can have that today. Just like we've got envy around today. You know what? We can have love also. And the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart. And, and so we can have love. So there's two different heritages that are still with us today. There's the one that came through the first Adam. Can be traced back to him and all that goes with that. And the second one that came from the second Adam, Jesus Christ, and all that goes with that. These are what have been handed down to us. Now, secondly, I want to talk about love and hate. 
Let's get back to that word envy. The Bible says the patriarchs became envious. They saw their brother. He had a coat of many colors. He's dad's favorite. That's a problem. And then he starts to open his mouth and tell him about how God has showed him he's going to be blessed and rise above it. You know, they don't like that at all. But it's not just that they uh, are mad at him about that. They, they're envying him. They're eyeballing him. I wish I had what he has. The word envy, when it says they became envious, the word that's used there in the Greek is zelo, it, and it, it sounds like zeal or zealous, and that's exactly what it means. It means to become hot. And that Greek word is used a number of times in the Bible, and sometimes it's a good word, and sometimes it's a bad word. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, we all are familiar, many of us, where it says, I wish you were hot or cold. That, that's the idea. I wish you were zealous. I wish you were hot for the love of God and for the gospel and for the things of God. I wish you had that kind of heat inside you for the things of God. That's a good, that's a good version of that word, zealous. The heat that his brothers, Joseph's brothers had, though, was not a good heat. This envy is linked to hate, and it's a spirit of murder. David is the best servant in the kingdom under King Saul. He is so loyal, he is so faithful. He's willing to do anything, anytime, whatever's needed. He'll go out and fight the giant. He'll watch the sheep. He doesn't care what it is. Just give me something to do and I'll be glad to do it. And he's, he's a, a great servant in the kingdom. But then King Saul hears the song that these women are singing. You know, Saul is slain his thousands, but David is ten thousands. And suddenly Saul is looking at him in a different way. There's a heat that begins to rise up in him and he becomes envious of him. And then he, he ends up taking a spear, tries to pin David to the wall with that spear. He sends a whole army of the nation of Israel looking for David to kill him because envy is a spirit of murder. And hate. Envy and covetousness go hand in hand. Covetousness. I want more. I desire more. I ought to have more. I'm, I'm not satisfied. And, and we're always looking at eyeing things that we want to see. You know, uh, Achan sees the wedge of uh, gold and the Babylonian uh, garment. And he wants that. And he's coveting that. And, and we're not content with what we have Coveting. You say, why is that the same? Because when we're coveting, it's very similar to envy. And it's all related to hate. James 4, verse 2. You lust and you don't have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. This is what prompts it in many cases. Covetousness uh, leads to hate, which leads to murder. Exodus 20, verse 17. From the Ten Commandments, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that, that is your neighbor's. So I don't covet anybody's donkey. Oh, what about their car or their truck? <laughs> On the other hand, so we got hate, we got envy, we got covetousness. On the other hand, we have love. Romans 13 verse 8 says, Owe no man anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. You know, everything that 
what the law was all about. It basically boils down to the greatest commandment, which is love God and love your neighbor. If we love God, then we will trust him. If we love God, we will delight ourselves in him. If we love God, we thank him that he doesn't give us what we deserve. How many know what we deserve? If you got what you deserve. But we love God. He has not, he has redeemed us. He has ransomed us. He has given us life. He has given us forgiveness. He has given, he gives us our next breath to breathe. I didn't create oxygen. Amen. And, and, and so God gives me so many things daily, loads us with benefits. Uh, and so uh, uh, covetousness is ruled out because of our love for God. If you love your neighbor, then you're glad for their blessing. You're glad when they get a big blessing. You're not envying them. You're not coveting what they have. Now let's think about that for a second because love can be a real challenge. You don't have to say amen, just think about it. Because if you see what love really is, and then you're really honest with who you really are, sometimes we don't always measure up. Do you know what I'm saying tonight? Anyone who reads a Sermon on the Mount, the greatest sermon ever preached, anyone who reads a Sermon on the Mount and feels entirely comfortable about the way that they're living needs to go back and read it again. Because we don't just nod our head, oh yeah, that's a good principle, that's a good, they are great principles, but are we living them and are we exemplifying those things? I just was reading Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina was demeaned by the liberal press He's a black senator from South Carolina, and they, and they said, you know what, you're just a token because you're a Republican, and they want somebody that, you don't know anything, you, you have no ability. Just, they just got you there so they can say, look, we have a black person in the Senate. This man responded very admirably. He said, <laughs> I love this quote, Woke supremacy is as bad as white supremacy. <laughs> then he quoted, he said, you need to read Matthew 5.44 and it's in red. And then he didn't say what it said. So of course, immediately after watching his little speech, I looked it up. And it's from the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is saying, but I say to you, love your enemies and bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That's challenging. That's not the normal way that we would live if we just did what came natural to us. And so sometimes our love for people is, is strained. It's not what it should be. And we're desiring sometimes uh, uh, what they have, maybe envious or covetous. And even our love relationship with God gets strained sometimes and is not what it ought to be. Because we are looking at our life and what we have, and we're like, we look around and, well, you know, someone else has more. I don't like the things that have happened to me lately. I've been going through a hard time. And I don't like what's on my plate. 
And I don't like the hand that I've been dealt. And I look at other people and they don't have these problems. And I look at my brothers and sisters in the church and they don't have these same problems that I'm going through. And you know what that is? Your love relationship with God is suffering. The challenge of love is that you and I can love God and that we can be thankful and contented. Listen to Hebrews 13. Let your conduct be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Joseph did not fear even though his brothers had unanimous consent against him and did their worst to him. He wasn't worried about that, what they're going to do. The Lord was with him. He wasn't worried about what Potiphar's wife accused him of. He's not worried about uh, being thrown in prison. What can man do to me? Well, you say, wow, I, I see a lot of things that man did to him. It was really bad. But see, the way Joseph processed it was a real key because uh, he said, you know what? I know that my God is with me. And I'm going to be content. He was content. He was the best prisoner in the, in the whole jail. He's mopping the floors of the jail. Prison, prison master, oh, the warden of the prison sees him. I'm going to promote you. You're going to be my head prisoner. And so, uh, you know, uh, uh, he just has a, a wonderful outlook on things because he knows that God is with him. God was with him. Paul. Paul didn't have to fear man, even though people wanted to kill him. They stoned him. They beat him with rods. Uh, he was shipwrecked, uh, but he was not afraid of any of those things. He knew that God was with him. And then he said in Philippians chapter four, he said, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound everywhere and in all things, all things. I've learned both to be full and hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because God is with me. I can do all things and I'm not going to be coveting and I'm not going to be complaining. God, I'm going to be thankful to you and I'm going to be content. The text says God was with him. And God blesses Joseph in the end and vindicates him over everybody that has accused him falsely and over his own brothers. He vindicates him in the end. He becomes greatly blessed. I suppose maybe, you know, when you're second in charge over Egypt, you, you know, you, you've got blessing pouring down on you. He's married, he has children. The calamities that happened to him, he said, were only setting the stage for his promotion and to save his family and ultimately the nation of Israel. He was sent to preserve life and he delighted himself in that. You know what? God, thank you. You, you gave me a wonderful uh, uh, lane to run in in life. He's not bitter at his brothers. He doesn't hate them. He can see God's hand guiding him to victory. And so, and so here we have on the one hand, hate and envy and covetousness. And on the other hand, we have love. And, and right now, you should feel 
like, God, I'm, I'm really challenged by this because sometimes I, I'm deficient. But you know what? God can help us with that. And I want to move along thirdly and talk about some choices that we can make. The lies of hell come to us sometimes. The devil is the father of lies. And he comes to you sometimes like an evil Valentine's Day card. You're the ugliest one of everybody. Or you're the worst Christian in this whole church. You don't deserve to be here. You shouldn't be here. You're no good. You can't serve God like the others. You're not even a real Christian. And he says, but don't take my word for it. Let me give you exhibit A and exhibit B. Exhibit A The thoughts that are in you are more akin to the patriarchs than the way Jesus showed love. And exhibit B, look at your struggles, look at your problems, look at your difficulties. If you were a genuine Christian, then you should be blessed and you should have an abundant life and just be happy and God pouring out one blessing after another and everything working smoothly and you're getting a paycheck every once in a while in the mail and, and all these things. But, but you, you just seem to go from problem to problem. And your car broke down this week. What's, you know, what's going on in your life? It's not working. This Christian life is not working. And so he brings up these two exhibits and brings these lies to our life. I want to recommend a few choices that we can make. The first choice is that we need to reject the lies of the devil. The Bible says, familiar scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he becomes a new creature Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But I wish that that was complete in all respects the day that we get saved, but it's not. You certainly did change the day that you got saved and, and a lot of things happened. You're a brand new person and your name got written in the Lamb's Book of Life and, uh, and, and, and we were transformed by the grace of God. But we have changing left to do. And we got some old things that still need to die and some things that need to be made new. The reality is it's a process. And so we can take some heart in that. You know, if I ask you about the story of your life, you tell me, well, I was born on, you know, January 16, uh, such and such a date. And I say, okay, well, tell me about, no, I, that's when I was born. Well, I think there must be more to your life than the day that you were born. Right? I mean, that's a wonderful thing. The day that you were born is an awesome thing. That's a glorious thing. But you know what? There's more to life than just the day that you were born. And there's more to salvation than the fact that way long ago you prayed a sinner's prayer. There should be things happening in your life today, an ongoing thing that's building and growing and maturing and lots of things that should be happening. And so we can take comfort in that. We can take encouragement in that. You know what? I'm not a finished product yet. And, and you know what? My, my salvation is secure in the Lord because I believe upon the finished work of the cross of Christ for my salvation. But God God didn't stop there. He's changing me day by day and the new things are coming and there's more, thing, more new things ahead. One big way that the love of God and love for people might be manifested in us 
is that if you get confronted and if you get convicted, well, that's, you know what? I'm aware right now of an area in my life where, you know, I'm, I'm kind of relating more to the patriarchs than I am to Jesus in this area of my life. Then you know what? You know what? how to love God at that time and how to love people, then you say, you know what? I'm going to take a hold of that and I'm going to bring it to the cross for execution. I'm going to take it down to the altar, the place of slaughter. I'm going to take it down there and I'm going to, I'm going to bring, I'm convicted, I'm confronted about envy, about covetousness, about hate, or, or my lack of, uh, of a contentment or my lack of love. And I'm going to bring that down. I may, I'm going to make a choice. I've got a wrong kind of fire burning in me. What's burning you? Amen. You know, this is somebody said that at breakfast this morning. What's burning you? You know what? Maybe you got the wrong fire burning in you. But you know what? You can make a choice and say, God, I, I, I need help in this area. And I'm going to make a choice. You know what motivates you to do that? Love. Love for God and love for people that you can have a different approach to them and bring it down to the place, not only of death, but also when the old things pass away and new things can come. God, I want to dump a big uh, 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 garbage heap of, of the old life right here at the altar, and I want you to give me some of the love of God and let it replace that in my heart. God, the, 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 give me your nature. Give me the nature of the second Adam and help me in this area of my life. We make a choice to yield. We make a choice to surrender. We make a choice to look for the Spirit's help. Help me not to just keep doing the same thing over and over and over. God, help me to have the Spirit's help so I can change. Give me a miracle. That's one miracle that we need. And that's one miracle God is glad to help us with. That deals with exhibit A. Now, what about exhibit B? When I look around at all the hardships that I'm facing at the moment. Now, just to pause here for a moment and say that maybe some of the hardships that you're going through right now are God's trying to get your attention because you're inside of the fish's belly right now and you're like, this is very uncomfortable. God says, are you ready to listen yet? And so maybe you're running from the will of God and if that's the case, I'll tell you why that you're eating the, uh, the husks and, and that kind of thing. But you know what? I want to encourage you. If that's the case, then make a choice right now tonight. I'm going to begin to ask Actively pursue and seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And then all these other things can start flowing to you that God wants to bless you with. But if you are pursuing the will of God and the kingdom of God and you say, how come? How come, you know, my car broke down and is misfiring right now? Or how come I had some a terrible tragedy? I, I'm reading a book that pastor recommended for me to read, and I'm, I'm reading this book today. I started out, first chapter, this guy had one thing after another, and his wife is, is, has a medical condition that, that they say most people die from this within a year. And then, and then his daughter has surgery, and he wakes up one time uh, in, in Russia, and in a hospital and he's tied down to his bed and he doesn't know where he is or what's going on. He's been medically induced coma for a period of time. This guy's got one bad thing after another. And yet, and yet, there's something on the other side of that. If you're in the will of God and pursuing the kingdom of God, then you can make a choice on how you're going to view things. Dismiss the lie that the real Christian life is never beset by problems or reversals. That's what all of Job's comforters are saying. That's not the truth. 
Truth is that sometimes bad things happen to good people and sometimes Joseph gets a bad deal, at least for a period of time. And then it gets worse. (laughs) And then it gets worse. (laughs) And he's praying, God, help me. (laughs) And for years, he goes through this challenge. And so, you know, You're in good company. Paul was shipwrecked, stoned, every kind of thing. I am of the opinion of this. This is is right at this moment. This is Pastor Kuhneman's opinion on something that is not specified in the Bible. Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. And many have speculated what that is. Is that an eye problem, some kind of physical thing? I am of the opinion that he said that was a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. And I am of the opinion that in many places, everywhere he goes, Satan is able to stir up people. Go, go, attack him, kill him, you know, stone him. And and people are incensed with hatred and they all want to get him. And, And he's been beaten, shipwrecked. He's been arrested. He's been thrown in prison. He's been uh, every kind of thing has happened to him. And so, you know, this idea that, you know, well, there must be something wrong with your Christianity because you have a problem. I said at the beginning tonight that life is made up, reality of life is made up of both positive and negative things, experiences. But depending upon how we process them, even the bad ones can be turned around for good. Here's how we look at that. Because I want to love God with all my heart and my challenge is to be spiritual not just that I would be saved not this is not just how you get saved I want to grow I want to go forward I want to love God and I want to be changed into the image of Christ and so I'm going to recognize first of all that God is the sovereign and he's the one that sits on the throne I've got to come to grips with that He is the king. He is the sovereign. And then secondly, that that God that sits on the throne and is able to do all things and to direct. That that God loves me more than I can understand or imagine. I believe that because his word says that. And even if Psalm 23, yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. The good shepherd is with you. He's leading. Say, it looks like the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah, that's where we are right now. But don't worry. I'm right here with you. And I have my rod and I have my staff and and I will comfort you and I will protect you say God can I go back where the green pastures are in the still waters well sometimes he leads us beside the still waters sometimes he leads us you know by the green pasture but you know what sometimes we need a little regeneration he renews our soul he restores my soul but sometimes he leads us through those perilous those dark paths uh, uh, of the valley of the shadow of death but even when you go through there you have God with you the great shepherd is right there with you and he says he says this this is my way for you God we got lost somewhere God says no I didn't get lost this is the way I'm guiding you And you're going to go through this difficulty, but don't worry. I'm going to be there in the midst of the fiery furnace right with you. And 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 you're not going to be destroyed by it. There's something on the other side of this. I can have victory even if I'm sold into slavery in Egypt, betrayed by my own brothers. And even if I get thrown into an Egyptian prison, we can have victory in knowing that our God, the Bible says in the text that we read, but God was with him. 
And so here's my challenge that I challenge myself with because I read the Sermon on the Mount and I see the challenges of love and I say, oh God, you know, I don't always measure up, but I have a God, I, I can set my eyes on him and I say, God, you know what? You're the one who's on the throne and you love me in a way that I can't even begin to understand. And you have good thoughts towards me. And even if right now in this life I have to walk through a difficult road right now, through some difficult paths, God, I know that you've chosen a lane for me to run. You know, what if you think about it this way? God's up in heaven and said, I need someone to do a job for me. It's, it's not an easy job. It'll involve some discomfort. And angels, you got an idea who, who I should select? This is not an easy job. And he says, well, why don't you select Kevin Murdo? That's a good choice. I think I will. And he select Kevin Murdoch or you. And now can you look at it in a different way? God says, all right, I've got a lane for you to run in. It's not going to be easy, but don't worry. I'm going to be with you all the way. And my grace will help you through difficult times. And when you, Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you through the rivers. They will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. The flame will not scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I want to make a choice tonight. I want to be thankful. In all things, give thanks. Even in the difficult places, I can rejoice in God because God is still good. And he's with me. And he has good plans for me. And I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to learn like Paul did. I'm going to learn to be content with God even though... There is good and there is bad and there is struggle sometimes. And God has, you read, read the end of the book. Is there anybody in here that walks with God who's going to lose? <laughs> no. I mean, you know, say, well, I would like to be second in charge over the land of Egypt. Listen, the future that we have is better than being second in charge over the land. The future that you have in front of you in Jesus Christ is better than being Pharaoh. It's better than being anything you can imagine in this life. Amen. Hallelujah. John Wesley, as I close with this. His commentary on Ephesians 5.20, he says... Giving thanks at all times and places and for all things, prosperous or adverse, since we all work together, since all things work together for good in the name of or through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we receive all good things. You know what? Even if you're in the fire, so tell the devil, you know what? Exhibit B, you can throw that out too. Because yeah, maybe right now I've got a lot of challenges on my plate. But you know what? That doesn't mean that God's not with me. He's always with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm going to learn to be content. And I'm going to learn to love God better. And I'm going to learn to love my brother and sister better. And my neighbor as myself. And God, I'm going to keep on going down that pathway and changing into what you want me to become. Amen. Let's bow our heads together tonight. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the hardest road anyone has ever walked has been the road that Jesus walked down to purchase your salvation and mine. And he didn't do that to establish a religion. He did that because God saw you and God loves you with a love that you can't understand. It's so great. But you, tonight, I talked about making choices. Here's a choice that you've got to make. What will you do with Jesus Christ? What will you do with salvation? God's love gift. Is there someone tonight 
that you're not right with the Lord. You want to get right tonight. You want to be at peace with God. You want to be a Christian. You want to serve God. Would you raise your hand right now and we'll pray with you, anyone at all, very quickly. Unsaved or maybe you're backslidden, you've walked away, but God still loves you and he has a, still has a good plan for your life. If you would come back and you can be redeemed, you'd raise your hand, anyone, very quickly. Praise God. Then saints tonight. The love of God was given to us, but also the challenge that comes to us that we would love God with all our heart and love people, even in the good and the bad. And you know what? If we will love people, and love God, even our bad events of life can turn around for good. The patriarchs, becoming envious, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. We're going to open the altars if the Lord is dealing with your heart. Let's stand together tonight, sing a song, and you can come find a place to pray as the Lord might be dealing with your heart. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock. Now I know I love you. we surrender right now Lord God in every area of our life where are, there are those things they're not from you Lord God all the things that might be there whatever seeds of envy or covetousness or hatred or, or resentment or these things that might be there but God have been there but God we're asking you that you would help us right now and we, we put those on the altar and we pray, God, for your newness of life. Let the old pass away and let the new come. And God, give us ability. We don't, we don't want that old thing that was handed down from, from sin. God, we choose the love of God. Let that enter our lives and let that become the new standard. And God, help us, Lord God, to see things with a right perspective. God, help us to view things correctly. Anoint our eyes with eye salve that we can see correctly. And God, let us just grow in, in a love relationship with you. And God, let us be changed from glory to glory into your image. And we pray all these things tonight in Jesus' name. Let's give God praise tonight. You, don't, you know, we don't always think about it, but I believe that, that the pleasure of God looks down upon us 
even, even, but I, I messed up, God. I wasn't what I should be. And yet the pleasure of God looks down and says, no, but son, daughter, your love for me was manifested and that you were willing to work on that and deal with that and surrender that to me. And God says, I received that as love from you. Amen. What a wonderful thing. Man, the God that we serve is so awesome. So I, I, would, I wouldn't let him go. I would, <laughs> you know what? If I was God and I, I wouldn't be around anymore, <laughs> amen. But, uh, but thank God for his mercy and his love for us. And I want to be changed. I want to become more like, like Jesus. We want to bow our heads and be dismissed. Uh, uh, Brother uh, Ken, would you, Hunter Kemp, would you ask God's blessing as we leave? Amen. The Lord bless you. Dismissed.